Well, folks, we're finally at the end of the card reveals for Rise of the Naga in Battlegrounds. And we got some crazy ones here, a bunch of new Naga stuff, of course, but also Leroy Jenkins coming to Battlegrounds. <laughs> That's awesome. And a uh, new tier six old Murkai Murloc. It looks pretty crazy as well. Let's kick things off, though, with the Naga side of things. This is Orgazoa the Tinder, not actually a Naga, but a new tier six five nine with Spellcraft, discover a Naga. So of course, this is gonna be a great way to both generate a ton of value and resources, but also find things that you need for your Naga build. Since this is a discover, of course, that means every turn, you're gonna to get to pick a Naga, maybe find some triples, just find really good units, and maybe sometimes just generate gold. Uh, you might be able to do things like get uh, that tier five Divine Shield minion in a pinch, play that out, get a Divine Shield for a round. There's lots of ways to Utilize this to some great results, both as that sort of long term value engine, but also sometimes in a pinch as well. There are even worlds where if you haven't really gotten a Naga thing going yet and you discover this early enough, it might just be a great way to fill in a gap and actually shift or pivot into Nagas as well. So all in all, this won't necessarily stick around in all Naga builds. Some will kind of already be cemented and further along than this can help. But sometimes uh, you can see this minion really coming along early and uh, forming a build, generating tons of value, and kind of snowballing out of control. Next up here is the Critter Wrangler, a new tier five Naga. It's a five, seven at tier five. Did I say tier five? Five, tier five, five, seven. It's a lot of fives, I don't know. But it reads, after you cast a Spellcraft spell on a minion, give it plus two, plus two. So here we have a way to, once again, scale things up faster and convert stats to permanent stats. Because although the Spellcraft itself uh, won't be a permanent effect, any buff that you might apply this plus two plus two will and with a guy that's like doubling or tripling stats you can see how quickly this all starts to build up into some really gigantic minions and it's nice to have a way to convert these things into long-term stats because yes sometimes the short-term one turn buff will be enough to keep you up in the mid game for tempo but i don't think it holds long enough into the late game as you wear on to really keep up because you know like for instance we're gonna look at this plus eight attack minion here in a second yeah plus eight attack might be great in a pinch on a cleave minion in the mid game that could be awesome but it's not gonna last forever eight just doesn't keep up this helps you keep up essentially by adding additional stats turn after turn that stick around and matter so it certainly feels like minions like this that help you uh move into that late game scenario will obviously be rather important for nagas finishing off their build all right, so this is the eel bound archer, a tier four, four, four. Here we go again. It's got spellcraft. Give a minion plus eight attack until next turn. So this is another one of our spellcraft buff fuel sorts of cards uh, where we're getting a lot of spellcraft action cycling up. And this one I think is really nice with plus eight attack. That's a really decisive stat line as opposed to just a few meager attack or a little bit of health. This really makes some difference. And for things like a cave hydra, right? You just put down one cleave minion in the mid game, maybe even a good divine shield minion could help create a carry unit basically by itself. Maybe a 10 attack cave hydra is enough to get you through a few mid game rounds, essentially all by its own. That could take out a few of your opponent's things. And it's all in the back of a single eel bound archer. And then if you need to pivot off later, you can always put this eight attack on something else as you start to finalize your build in future rounds. So yeah, I think this will be a nice little option for mid game Naga builds, just keeping up sometimes with key minions, sometimes just plus eight attack helps to clear that one thing you might not otherwise have been able to. So all in all, it'll be a, a big part of Naga builds. And then next up here, we have the Lava Lurker. This is a cool little tier two, two five Naga. The first spellcraft spell cast on this each turn is permanent. So this is a really interesting build around opportunity because suddenly you're taking all these temporary buffs with spellcraft and maybe making them permanent pretty early in the game. So for instance, a Lava Lurker with, you know, an eelbound archer supporting it early on, you can start to stack up some pretty crazy attack buffs over the course of the game. Uh, and this is also going to have uh, two spells per turn if this is golden. So essentially it could get even bigger if you golden it, which won't be necessarily hard to do uh, for a tier two. So this is one of those things you might have early that kind of sticks around for a while. Now, one downside is if you don't hit the spellcraft early, this might be stuck for a few rounds where it's not doing much. But that two five stat line, you know, it's going to chip away at opponent's boards a little bit, at least with five health. Not exciting, but not absolutely miserable either. So all in all, I, I think Lava Lurkers will show up and sometimes get really scary and really big and sometimes perhaps feel even a little bit oppressive in the early to mid game. 
So now we're going to move on beyond the world of Naga, and we're going to take a look at young Murkai, who's coming along to replace the Seafood Slinger. So Seafood Slinger was the Murloc Tier 6 minion, uh, was supposed to support Murlocs, but really ended up being a sort of mulligan for Goldens, where you could just take a reroll on your Goldens when you found him discovering Tier 6 stuff. Uh, which created some really crazy loops in the late game and gave people way too many options to find perfect sorts of builds. So glad Seafood Slinger is going away, number one. And he's being replaced with a pretty cool card here, I think. Young Murkai. I don't know why Young Murkai is bigger than Old Murkai, but apparently he's young and strapping and strong. Tier 6, 8, 5 Murloc. At the end of your turn, adjacent Murlocs trigger their battle cries. So that's awesome. There's obviously a lot of buff based battle cries in Murlocs. So you can put this in like cold light seers, for instance, start stacking up additional health. This also does work with Bran, we're told. So if you have that Bran already supporting your Murlocs, this actually, when it triggers, will double up again with Bran because their battle cries going off, your battle cries go off twice. So um, fits right into just stacking gigantic Murloc boards. Now, I will say, you know, a lot of the times it feels like Murlocs are just totally driven by poisonous builds and things like this often feel like overkill or perhaps unnecessary. You kind of get to some points where their health's enough and it's the poisonous that matters. And it's like, oh, they're already value trading a lot of things anyway. So will Murkai help you get there faster? Will he be unnecessary? That's where I am a little unsure. I kind of wish Murlocs could move away from poisonous so that some of these like cool stat plays and, and stat stacking could exist uh, in a cool way, it feels like Murkai would support that really nicely. Maybe they're just the super high health value traders of the world, but without Poisonous, that might be a fun direction to take Murlocs. But all in all, uh, still a really fun design. I'm excited to see this thing pop off with brands on board just going absolutely crazy. And then finally, we have Leroy coming to Battlegrounds. Leroy the Reckless is here to replace a Deadly Spore, which is leaving. It's a tier 5, 6 2. That sounds familiar. And it reads, Death Rattle, destroy the minion that killed this. So it's kind of a poisonous style effect here on a Death Rattle, but it does actually have some upsides. Uh, for instance, Divine Shields. If, if Deadly Spore, Spore hits a Divine Shield, just pops the shield. It's basically a 1-1. Leroy would still kill that minion as long as it uh, killed him at 2 health, which is pretty darn likely. So, you know, better against Divine Shields. If it gets cleaved, still kills the minion that cleaved it if it didn't die. So some upside there as well. So all in all, uh, just pretty much a better version of Spore. And yeah, there you go. That wraps it up for the Rise of the Naga reveals. I think that's everything that's coming in the patch as far as I know. So you can start theorycrafting how all these Naga things are going to pan out, how you're going to play all these sorts of things. What are you going to target? What are you going to tear up for, etc.? I, uh, I'm looking forward to playing this. We'll spend a couple days playing Battlegrounds as we typically do when the patch comes out, give all this stuff a look, see how fun it is, and go from there. But I'm excited to play some Nagas, actually excited to play some, some Murlocs, play some Leroy. All that sounds pretty darn fun. So as always, share your thoughts on these cards down in the comments below. Thanks much for watching, and until next time, game on. Step aside.